Well, I think too often the debate is, is framed that the crisis we face today is Islam versus the West. And it's really more an issue, in, uh, the, the central issue to me is really uh, fundamentalisms, plural, uh, versus a modern, secular, post-enlightenment world. And it's dangerous to, to talk about the whole Christian right with one broad swipe because there are many uh, different, uh, divi different sects within it. But at a certain point, there, there is a substantial part of it uh, that, that, uh, who, who are pro proponents of real the the theocracy. And I think that is quite dangerous when you want to have biblical law. There are dominionists in the Christian right. Uh, who want biblical law as part of our government, and they believe that the United States is a Christian nation. Uh, that's not the case. It's a pluralistic nation, and you've had this constant battle in the United States. It, it, it goes back to our inception, but in the last few years, it's really reaching a fe fever pitch, pitch between fundamentalists uh, and, the more, and, and secular America. And I think it's a real major battle within America itself. That is, you've heard in recent years the battle between red and blue states or the values wars. I think it's much deeper than that. I think it's much larger than that. I think it's fundamentalism uh, versus a secular post-enlightenment pluralistic country that uh, allows for, for people to have what, uh, worship whatever religion they want or none at all. Uh, instead, you, you have fundamentalists who want this to be a Christian nation. If you read, for example, the Left Behind series, uh, which has sold over 60 million copies, this is Tim LaHaye, who was one of the founders of, uh, of the Council of National Policy, one of the founders of the Moral Majority, close to Jerry Falwell. The message of that series is that we should be a Christian nation. If you interpret the book of Revelations literally, as he does, you, you, and if you actually read it, it ends up with anyone who is not born again being killed by Christ. Uh, this ends with uh, uh, billions of people being crushed, literally, uh, in the wine press. These are the grapes of wrath, that famous phrase. I, I think a lot of people don't realize what that means. But it, 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 Christ is harvesting the, uh, the, with his, the, the grapes are the people who have not accepted uh, Christ is their personal savior and he puts them in the wine press and crushes them and their blood flows through the valley of Armageddon uh, and, and a valley of blood 200 miles long. And this is very disturbing theology. That, that's a literal interpretation uh, by uh, some of the extremist elements of, uh, of the fundamentalists. They see secular world, the secular world as being non-godly. They divide. It's very much a dualistic Manichaean world where they see good and evil. Uh, there is a godly world in which you accept Christ, and there is an ungodly world which is effectively satanic. And the secular world to them, uh, we see it, uh, many of us who are secular, uh, see it as pluralistic and, and humanistic. Nothing could be seen as more evil than that. If you read the works of Tim LaHaye, for example, The Battle for the Mind, this is a political tract by a, a right-wing theologian. And it, it, he declares quite, uh, quite openly that no secular humanist should be allowed to hold office in the United States, period. Uh, so, so this is a war against secular humanism. And now uh, you have over 200,000 evangelical churches in the United States. In many ways, they've become the infrastructure for a political machine, a right-wing political machine. I think uh, the liberal secular world has really sort of turns the other channel when the Christian right comes on, and they haven't really examined it. They don't really understand what it's all about, and there certainly are elements of it that I think think are potentially very dangerous. One thing, it's become a massive right-wing political machine. You have over 200,000 evangelical churches. And that tends to, that, that, that's become a political movement, a right-wing political movement uh, that evokes as a block where, in which the pastors are almost uh, precinct captains, the way the, the, the liberals once had labor or the black churches as part of a liberal political movement. Both of those uh, entities have, uh, uh, have sort of fallen apart of late. 
Uh, but the Christian right has been on the ascendancy for about 30 years, and people vote the way their pastors want them to. In many ways, it's a very insular culture that doesn't partake of mainstream secular media, for example. Uh, one a former evangelical told me that just before the November elections, her, her pastor would say, I want all of you who are Republicans and who are registered to vote to stand up, and I want you to pray for everyone who's seated, for the sinners who are seated. So there are ways of getting the message across, even though the pastors are supposed to be nonpartisan. These are tax-exempt churches, uh, and, and they're part of a vast movement. People like Jerry Falwell uh, uh, and, and a huge number of uh, Christian right organizations draw them all together so that they can act in concert on various issues, whether dom domestic and foreign. Uh, Jerry Falwell told me that uh, a good two years before uh, the 2004 election, they determined to put that, the, uh, the, ma the marriage amendment on the ballot in Ohio, and there were two reasons for that. One is because they want to defend marriage and keep homosexuals from having marriage, but also to turn out the vote, and, and there is a gay baiting vote, and it, it, uh, it was very successful in turning out voters in Ohio, and uh, uh, probably proved to be the difference in winning Ohio for Bush. In the 60s, you, you had a, a counterculture, where, and if you smoked marijuana, if you listened to the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, if you knew who Timothy Leary was, if you were in civil rights marches and against the war in Vietnam, you were not going to vote for Richard Nixon. By the same token, today, I think the Christian right is a counterculture of sorts. And if you go to church every week, uh, if, if you read the Bible regularly, if, if you look to Jerry Falwell, uh, or t read Tim LaHaye's Left Behind series, you are not going to vote for Democrat. In fact, you may even consider uh, voting for, uh, for a Democrat is a sin. Uh, it's ungodly that you're voting for abortion, for murdering children. And, and the, right ha the Christian right has come to uh, create a, a, almost a political theology in which uh, you can't be a good Christian, you can't be a good born-again Christian and possibly vote for a Democrat. So this has, I think, twisted uh, uh, political values so that uh, working people, hard-working people who don't make a lot of money are voting against their own interests. They're voting for tax breaks for billionaires. Uh, they're voting uh, for a war in Iraq that is not in their interest, where we're spending hundreds of billions of dollars uh, and, and so on. So you have a whole uh, political constellation there that, that, that's evolved. Beliefs they're voting for are religious beliefs, uh, theological beliefs. Uh, they, in, in terms of their economic interests, the tax policies of the Bush administration have aided uh, billionaires far, far more than working people. Uh, they, they've taken uh, social, the social safety net away from these people. Um, and, and I think it's really hurt their personal interests. What, what's interesting is the way the Christian right positions themselves as if they are the victims there. That Christianity is a religion under attack. It's under siege in America. Uh, you know, there have been 43 presidents of the United States. All of them have been Christian. Uh, if, if that's victimhood, uh, I would like to be such a victim. Uh, somehow they, they make their, 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 their followers feel that way, and many of them, frankly, are not well off. But the answer uh, is to look into what is their economic self-interest and vote accordingly. The Democrats have been very weak in terms of getting uh, uh, working-class Christians and so on to, to actually vote for their economic self-interest.